Hello, hello, how's everyone? Thank you for being here in another episode of Three Charts at 3 p.m. As you know, you know uh, this is a mystery chart show. Today is going to be special. We have the Du Bois Challenge. We have our friends here, Anthony, Alan, and Suko. Suko, is that right? Seiku. Seiku, I'm sorry. Seiku. And they're going to bring us and going to show us something super important. I wanted to start with this quote from Martin Luther King. You know, we are not makers of history. We're made of by history. And since we all love data visualization, we all work with data. You know, history, there is data. That's, that's very important because today we're going to talk so about something very important. Where did they actually data visualization, you know, started? As you can see on the back of and, and, and Alan and I, this is Du Bois, you know, work. Some of his work uh, in history, you know, there's, I mean, I don't even know if there is somebody in the 1900 that made such great visualization. I don't even know if that even possible. Uh, and that, you know, many of these charts, uh, we put in charts like this that I have right now. And we put it uh, in so many places and we use it on, in, in tools like Power BI, Tableau, Excel. I mean, if you don't know the word that history started, maybe there's a lot of people watching right now, they're probably in their 20s. Hey, we want you to know this. I was talking with Anthony about this in the, in the first. And I have a kid. My son is like 12 years old. He doesn't even know where these things are coming from. He's playing games all day long. I want him to understand that. I want him to know that there were people in 1900, like Du Bois, creating incredible visualizations. And why did these visualizations are important? Because he was, you know, providing a message, providing something, making something with data to change history, to change his world. And that's what I think is so important. And I'm super glad that Alan and all these guys are here today and we can share some of these incredible visualizations and also what this Du Bois Challenge means. So Alan, tell me a little bit about or you, anybody, like why you guys created it and what is it so important? Anything you guys want to say, it's fine. Sure. I can go first. So how did this all start? <laughs> well, <laughs> let me see. Seiku and I were talking about doing something, uh, you know, it was Black History Month, but even besides that, we were just thinking about doing something that celebrated Du Bois. You know, I've been reading about him for about four or five years now. And so when I found out four or five years ago that he had done all this great work, someone who looked like me, who was doing data visualizations and did them really well. Um, yeah, we were talking and we were like, you know, why don't we have some sort of challenge out there? Because we were looking at like Makeover Monday and things like that. So we wanted to start something as well. So. I had already known Anthony, for, I had met up with him before. I'm at a data visualization um, seminar. So I tapped him to join us. And so, you know, Anthony, you know, props to him. He has recreated all the visualizations. He has his own tool to do it. And so he helped us like get the data sets and start creating this challenge. And, you know, Seiku and I just started over Twitter, just challenging people to recreate these visualizations. And it's important to me because a lot of people do not know about Du Bois, and I definitely want to, um, you know, increase the narrative to make sure that people know that there are people of color who have also contributed to this space. Absolutely. I think it's great. In the chat, this this that I'm showing is from Anthony. So it is in the chat. Uh, put it there early today. Uh, if you wanted to see that incredible presentation that he has, uh, highly encourage you to guys to do this. I watched it. I, I was looking at it yesterday this morning. So much stuff, good stuff there to learn. I mean, thank you, Anthony, for that. So okay. anything else, Anthony, you wanted to say about the, the challenge or anything about the voice that is interesting? Oh, me? Oh, yeah. So so my journey started like in 2019 around this. So um, I knew about um, the Du Bois work. I'd seen it presented in a couple of other venues. And my, I challenge myself to say, hmm, I have these tools that I'm building. What would it be like if I were to go through page by page and recreate these? Wow. Um, and, and that's what I did. And, and when Alan asked, they said, um, do you have this stuff? I said, yep, got it all. Here it is. Here's, <laughs> the, here's the GitHub. Here's the data. So, um, so what Alan sort of encouraged us to do is to share this out with the uh with the larger community via twitter mm -hmm. and uh the rest is history it's awesome it's yeah. awesome 
And I, th I, I know, not I think, I know that Anthony was a lifesaver. Because um, when we first started this, you know, it was just like, how do we mm -hmm. scrape this data together? Like, how do we compile this stuff? It was one thing to look at the visuals, but then to actually have the raw numbers and stuff um, exactly. already compiled was a true lifesaver. And I think we all started with the same, you know, background. It's like, we, we admire the work of the boy. Um, I personally live in Nashville, so his history at Fisk, I've always just seen him and, and historical stuff here at Fisk in Nashville. And so as I was getting deeper into my data visualization career, I'm always looking for ways to, you know, push myself, figure out new techniques, do different things. And uh, when we saw the different works, it just all came from pureness of, you know, how can we celebrate this man who's done so much for the industry? This is great. This is great stuff. So I just wanted to, 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 to thank you for, for that. So I wanted to see uh, if you guys want to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what do you do, and then we can start you know, sharing some of those visualizations that you guys uh, available for us today that we're going to discuss. So, Alan, tell me a little bit about, about you. What do you do? Where do you work? Uh, so, for me, I am, I teach part-time. So, I teach, uh, I'm actually teaching a course on Du Bois uh, so in his sociological approach at in CUNY in New York City. Uh, and also, I am vice president of community and impact at a nonprofit called Data Stories, where we are encouraging different people to you know get more involved with telling stories of data getting more familiar with data which we call a lot of us call data literacy so mm -hmm. between those two things i stay pretty busy also running this challenge <laughs> awesome awesome what about you anthony tell us a little bit about you, what you so doing? yeah so i'm a developer and a designer so i make tools and i use tools for having the computer make the pictures so I always like to combine the art and the code together. Um, and um, I'm, I'm glad to be able to uh, use those skills to show everybody what the Du Bois has done. Awesome. And, and I work for uh, Lovelytics, um, mm -hmm. the director, well, was the director of data visualization, but now I'm moving over towards data engineering. Um, mm -hmm. So before, you know, really focused on data visualization and the front end piece of it, but um, I'm kind of feeling, I'm enjoying more of the back end piece of it because you have to understand the data behind the scenes, the numbers in order to really get a good story. So, um, but all things, you know, business intelligence, you no know, tool agnostic, you know, I have a number of experience and a number of tools. So I just enjoy a really good story um, with a great data set. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. So just to, uh, so everybody knows a little bit about also, this show is a, a sponsored by Data Meaning. That's our, our company where we work for and um, just super glad that they allow us to, to do things like this. Um, just wanted to show everyone a little bit here of some of these visualizations. Uh, let me ask you something, Anthony. This visualization from what, 1900? What, what exact year we're talking about? 1900. So right. um, the, the visualizations that we see here were created for something called the, exposition, the Paris Exposition, which was a world fair. Mm -hmm. um, in 1900. The idea for Du Bois was he wanted to show the story of African Americans um, from emancipation to now. Um, there were a lot of ideas going around that said black people were inferior and so forth. And he wanted to disprove that with data and numbers and tell, the, tell their story. Um, and it was an international audience. Some of the visualizations actually compare the achievements of Black Americans to other countries, So, for example. Um, so that was his idea, was to use you know, charts, graphs, and data to tell the story, to tell the story of progress. Awesome. It's, it's incredible because if you look at some of these visualizations from 1900, there's some of this, I mean, I would say maybe probably like half of them at minimum we're still using, we're still using some Absolutely. of these visualizations now, maybe with Tableau, with Power BI, with, you name it, you know, MicroStrategy or ex just even Excel. Uh, many of these visualizations, I see a map there, so many bar charts, um, the same type of visualizations almost we're still using. And okay. I think this is super, super interesting. Yeah, let me point out, there are some things that they invented Mm -hmm. that still are not being used and i'm really pushing that they should be so if you look over my shoulder there's the fan chart mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right um it's yeah. kind of a 
amalgamation between a um, what we would call a, a, a pie chart, but it's a it's a different kind of thing. Um, so so yeah, so I even have tools to even make those. So we'll talk about them. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So one more last thing, and then we can start. Um, I just want to tell everyone that uh, here at uh, Data Meeting, the company I work for, and Aaron is going to put it in the chat. Uh, we are going through some webinars uh, for layout best practices, templates, wireframes. And next week on the March 29, we have a dashboarding. So if anybody is free, totally free uh, webinar. So if anybody uh, that is watching uh, would like to attend, just let us know. Uh, we're going to talk about call out numbers, how you can do better uh, positioning your dashboard. And we can provide you a lot of resources. How can you make your biz uh, increase adoption? And the link is in the chat. But let's just go. Go. Let's start. Uh, Anthony, since you, were the one, you, you got here first today, and I, lo I love all your work. Now, seriously, thank you so much for for You're being welcome. here today. And, and that is an amazing PD. I mean, look at his presentation. Seriously, I mean, just take advantage of that. Okay. So can you turn on my screen share? Yes. Perfect. Okay, we got it. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So the first one I've done is from Ekaro Bernardes. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Yeah. At Ekaro BSC um, mm -hmm. on Twitter. And he's doing um, an illiteracy rate. Mm -hmm. um, and there's many things that are that stand out about this chart and also how uh, Mr. Bernardes has done it. So one of the things that we wanted to push was not just recreate the data from 1900, but to bring in contemporary data. So that's the first thing that um, Icaro has done in that um, he took the data from illiteracy rate of black people in Brazil, which I think where Carl lives. Um, so, so by the way, he's been one of the active members of the challenge. And um, so let me tell you what I like about this chart and, um, and, and, and how, how he's done it and what I like about it. So if you look at it carefully, there's something here that's a little bit different from the way we do it, right? Mm -hmm. So typically, it, the time series is on the x-axis, uh -huh. right? And your data is on the y-axis. They didn't do that. Um, you'll see this kind of, and you'll also see, so you'll see the dates, 2016, 17, 18, and 19, mm -hmm on the vertical axis okay wow. yeah the other thing that they did here is if you notice i'm going to zoom in a little bit here mm -hmm. so people can see okay mm -hmm. uh, look at that corner right mm -hmm. so there's a little there's a defined corner on that particular um chart okay right? And also, it's interesting to see. Oops, let me. Oh, sorry. Go back. And zoom into the other one. Okay. Also, it's interesting to see the contrast between the black and the white, right? Yeah. So the y axis here are the numbers here are one color and it leads you directly down with a contrasting color to the data all right hmm. so so again this kind of woven it's a bar chart but it's kind of not a bar chart um in that it's kind of woven in that you can see this is kind of a weave here yeah um so that's that's just an interesting thing about the chart style and it's very, it's, different, yeah. it's very faithful mm -hmm. to the original. And that's one of the things when I look at the recreations that I'm going to see, saying, okay, how close is it to the original? Because that was one of my goals um, in doing that. But let me show you something else here. Mm -hmm. This is also what uh, Mr. Bernardes has posted to Twitter. Awesome. This is 
this is his sketch of how he <laughs> did mm -hmm. of how he did the corners, mm -hmm. right? So can you guys see that? Or do I need to zoom it in? Yes. Yeah. No, no, I, I can see it. You know, okay. he's, he's in the chat, so that you know. He's in the chat. Yeah. He's there. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, is this is great. If, okay. you, know, if, if you wanted to say anything, just let I us know. I just be quiet and, and let him talk. <laughs> yeah, no. If, if you wanted to say anything, uh, put it in the chat, and we can post it here in the in top of the screen. So, any comments you wanted to say to us, just let us know. We can put it there. Okay. So I've got a couple more, but we can uh, move over to some of my my colleagues if we want to do that. So I, I really like this one. This is great. So do you have any comments, uh, anyone? Anyone on this one? Any comments? Um, yeah, this one always intrigues me. This style always intrigues me and throws me off a little bit because mm -hmm. the reverse axis to what we're used to. The reverse axis. I was just trying to, I think Anthony has told me before, but I'm trying to understand the interwovenness. Is there any significance with that? I don't know if there's any significance other than that's just the artistry that they used, right? So they use this in another plate as well where they're combining, um, two geographical regions where they've got you know one going this way and one going this way so it's basically a horizontal bar chart and a vertical bar chart woven together right and again they're using contrasting colors i have never seen that in any kind of contemporary work um but i've seen that there's two two versions here the other thing i want to point out here is um <clears throat> Mr. Bernardes has also, um, you know, highlighted some some data here. This wasn't in the original, but I think that's a um, that's a good addition here. Was yeah. the original have the check mark on a year like in two thousand nineteen? We see a check mark. It, it did. It did. So so because that wasn't at the time, they had um, it was forecasted data. They didn't have the the the, the data, so that's why. They have the question mark there. Okay, I was for me that was intriguing. Uh, the check mark. It was interesting to see that there. Hmm. I like the big number, you know, on the right, three one point one eight, thirty one point eight. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. And I don't think we emphasized enough how you know the boy and his team. These were hand drawn. There was no tool mm -hmm. back then. So. Yep. Very nice. Yeah, I, th I think this one's really great, and I think like everybody pinpointed the KPI on the top, the thirty-eight, you know, percent really just draws you to that particular number and and the story in here. Because I think the data set is relatively, you know, not a lot of records, not a lot of rows, but you know, what can you pull out? And there's some really good key insights here on top of just the craft um, as well, and then the key call out of the, you know, knowing that it's forecasted, oh. questionable, and how can you call out forecasted, unsure data. Uh, without really, you know, making sure you're just drawn to it and, and calling it out. So this is, I, I really like this one a lot. Yeah. So the author <laughs> says, yes, I also tried to make some kind of forecasting in the last point, 2019. Thank you. Really cool stuff. I love the colors. I mean, and I think the colors are very good. I mean, you, you don't get distracted by weird colors or confusing colors. So, so I also want to bring out one, one more thing that I yeah, see yeah, that, that, that people do in when they're doing the recreations. Uh -huh. So uh, the in the originals, at least the, the recreations that we have here, everybody tends to have this kind of linen, light brown background. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do that in mine because mm -hmm. I'm not sure that that's not just an aging of the of Ooh. the of the originals, um, but a lot of people do that, and I think it's fine to do that. But I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so that's 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 a very good point. Yeah, because I noticed that too. So yep. chose cho the next one. Chose the next one that you have. Me or somebody else? No, you can. You just just let's keep going okay, with you, cool. and then we can go jump to somebody okay. else. Well, the next yeah. one is by the same person, right? Uh, yeah. But um, this was one of my favorites. The okay. the original talked about um, wealth and mm -hmm. and you know over the years. In the original, you know the data went up and up. There was a little link, and then it went back. This one shows a completely different story, 
right? This is showing, you know, the income going down, right? And, and people losing jobs. And it, it tells a different story with the same format. And he's also done, and, and again, it's a, a, I would say a faithful recreation of the original. So uh, another thing we want to, to point out here is in the original, they split the mm -hmm. access labels mm -hmm. from the actual graph. Mm -hmm. um, again, you, you, you sometimes see that, but not often. Um, and, and you see it here. Um, so again, he's using the, um, the, 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 the format of there's the big subhead and, you know, the, the bit headline and then a subhead. And he also has, you know, the modern sort of deal where you've got the big numbers pulled out. This tells a completely different story in using the same format. So this is people, you know, losing their jobs, if you will, and, and work being uh, more informal. Very cool. What I really like about all of this visualization is the titles. The titles are so good, I will say. You know, they, they make so much of emphasis on good titles to grab your attention, to start telling you that story. I, I think one of the subtle things on here that I really like is the conversion rate uh, from Brazil dollars to USD in, in the title. So if I'm just looking, not in the title, but in the, above the KPIs at the bottom, um, Real subtle because you're talking to a, a various audience. So it's like, you know, what audience am I talking to? Am I talking to, you know, Brazilian audience or USD? Like, what's conversion? So it talks to a wide range of people there. And then just calling out again, the bottom, I'm a, I really enjoy BAN, big aggregated numbers. So seeing mm -hmm. those big numbers on the bottom and, and, you know, calling out those key insights, I think this looks really great. And the other thing is the, the annotations. Again, the annotations were in the original as well. And they're also very useful uh, in this context. Correct. I really like the annotations. Um, one of the things that I notice here that I'm going to try to do it myself and to use it is I usually have the big numbers on top, right, Anthony? But what if I do this and put it on the bottom? But what I think it works is because there is this dark brown on the, on the background. So you kind of like you you start on top, but then you like look at the look at down real quick, you know, and then you look at that. I think it works. I mean, I like it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you think, Alan? You want to say something? Uh, no, I was just saying. I do. Everyone's pretty much you know commenting on stuff that I was looking at as well. But I was wondering, like the numbers, like the. I mean, I guess it, it does draw your attention. I'm used to putting them, like either on the side or. On the side or on top, yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. You know, they, they, they can also be a summary, right? So you look at them, them from the top, you start reading, you start getting all your kind of like understanding what's going on, and then in the bottom, it can be like a summary of what mm -hmm. you just discovered, you found uh, from the visualization or the story. So that could be also another way. I mean, and I think that's what it's trying to do here because it's a 60, 65% more, 85% more, 196 more. So, yeah, makes yep. sense. Very nice. Very okay. nice. Oh, so this is the author. He says, by informal work, I mean work that is not regulated by the state. In Brazil, it's made main, mainly by people in the poorest parts of the country. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. Yeah, there were some people in the chat asking for what informal work will mean. What is right. the definition? What does it mean? Okay. And, and I appreciate, you know, this data. This is not data that you see every day mm -hmm. or for, for people that you hear about every day, at least in my circles. Um, so I appreciate, you know, the author pulling out this data and, and, and making it known. So yeah. thumbs up for that. No, yeah, and I know Ikaro's been doing a lot of recreations. I think he's doing all 10 weeks of our challenge. So our challenge is going for 10 weeks, and I think he's doing um, all 10. Yep. So, so Mr. Question, does the does it finish or do you're still you're still going you're still going with the 10 uh, is the 10 weeks still going or uh, yeah, we're in week seven. This we're is week seven. seven. Okay. Right. Um, and of course the stuff just stays out there. So if anybody wants to, to keep going. Go for it. Yeah, we don't 
there's no official like deadline so perfect and still and there's always if somebody wants to go back and start from the first one they can still do that you know it doesn't matter okay that's right out there so 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 carl is one of the few that's actually following the rules and that you know we post one one <laughs> week and then he gives the, what what people do and i'm not complaining right that's um what, when we do the the thing i i say all right here are the 10 People tend to pick and choose which ones they want, which is perfectly fine. That's awesome. Yeah. So, okay. So do, do you, um, anyway, Alan, just show me one that you got and, and we can come back to Anthony Layer or to whoever. Yep. Sure, I can go in. Yeah, um, it's yeah. just one. And so far, super cool. I mean, I think it's awesome. I think it's great. I, I, I'm really jazzed that the car is on the call. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, no, that's this is great. Thank you for Ricardo for for being with us today. Really appreciate it. So we right. to have the author. Yeah. So I'm sharing one of my favorite ones. So this is actually part of our crossover wow. challenge. So in addition to um, the the boy challenge, we also have the Tuskegee wow. Airmen challenge. And so this, as people, we were honoring. Uh, we have some data around the Tuskegee Airmen, and people have been also doing that one as well. So this one's been by Damola Ladifu. Um, he mm -hmm. is, um, as you can see, is a very awesome tableau artist. Mm -hmm. uh, so what right. I love about this one is that it's honoring the Tuskegee Airmen, but he's using a turbine engine as part of the data visualization. Wow. So what I love right. about it, then he talks about the single engines and the twin, twin engines. Those are the two types of engines that wow. the pilots used. And as you hover, trying to hover and as you hover over it mm -hmm. you get different you get information about different um pilots so Super. i was trying to do that okay so yeah there's this this is fascinating yeah so he talks about that and then you get information along the bottom here you get the graduation date for the service pilots oh some of them are unknown but you get the graduation date you get their hometown um and then just following this whole turbine uh -huh. you know you get to go across different Fascinating. You got different information about each person. So it's fascinating how they can look great. This this is just blows my mind. Um it when I so it, my first time looking at it, to be honest with you, and I when I the first thing that I was thinking, wow, this looks like something from the sea or from the water or something. I don't know. It, it took me a minute. I didn't get it in it, it, the first time. Yeah, yeah. But it looks <laughs> I like, and I said, it kept reminding me of like a plane's, you know, the yeah. turbine engine. And yes. I did reach out to Danola, and I was correct in the interpretation. So, yeah. One yeah, cool this, thing is on top, Anthony. Uh, you can see that it has kind of like how to read. So you see that on on the left on the those little things. Yeah, how to read. So it tells you a little bit of how to read it, which is great. Yeah, I really like the context because, um, mm -hmm. like you're saying, like I'm looking at this like, wow, it's visually appealing. I love the colors, but then you, if you actually take some time to look at it, like, whoa, this is really detailed. Like, this is single yeah. engine, this is twin engine, this the circles and just you know the tool tips right. and everything. So I think this is really like incredibly put together. Yeah, and that's always a balance too because sometimes you see a lot of art, what I'm calling artistic data viz, but mm -hmm. are they functional? You know, sometimes they're not all, they're pretty to look at, but they're not always functional or able to be navigated. I mm -hmm. find that this one, you know, that you're able to, as you know, good thing he has the instructions here, and you can kind of go through it, and you get the whole turbine. You see how it's going from 1912 to 1914, like in that circular motion as far as dates. And he's showing you here on the out, outer rim is the name, on the inner rim you have the graduation dates. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can pick someone's name here. And then you can see it filters, you know, to that person in their graduation. Um, but yeah, it's like so. I guess it's like a time. It's a timeline almost. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. If anybody wants to check it out, it's in the chat. So in the chat, we have the link. You want to open in your other screen, play with it. More than welcome. Um, another cool thing when you hover on it, ho hover to anything, to anything over there and there. Yeah, anything. One thing that I noticed was the font of the tooltip. So that font, it's like a typewriter, I think, font or something, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's incredible. It's so well done. It's really, really good. It's excellent. 
And um, okay, so then we have okay. It's um, it looks great. It is. It's actually it doesn't take that much space, which is incredible too. Like you can print this, um, yeah. so it's not like a big, you know, long or wide uh, screen. It's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's it's awesome. I really like it. Anybody have anything? Any other um, comment? Just let us know. So some people in the chat says that it definitely brings out to them that turbine engine. So for Robert says that uh, in the chat that he definitely got that turbine engine uh, look like. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Very cool. Very interesting. Yeah. They say they said that in the chat that is nice and clean. Um, so does the you know I see that we have red, I mean kind of like pink and blue. Is there any reason for the blue? Mm. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure offhand. Um, maybe. Oh well, what I may say is that maybe the red is for the people for red for the pilots who flew the single engine. Mm -hmm. and the blue is for the people who who flew twin engines oh. so if you see like in the beginning of time here there's a more red versus mm -hmm. blue mm -hmm. click the blue but there's more red more red versus blue because probably we started out with single engines and then we didn't okay. see the introduction of twin engines until around this time here that i'm hovering over so. okay very nice very cool so do you have any other one? Show us the, uh, the next one. The next one. Let me see if I have one. One of the cool things about that last one, Anthony, is that it, if you think about it, that could be a mother version of what you have in your in the back of your screen right here, right? That could be the the original was that fan chart, and this yep. is kind of like the, the modern 2020 right. version. Yeah. That's what I like. Let's see. Um, oh, here we go. So another one that I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. So this is going to probably be a follow, uh, like a follow up to someone. So another one that we so, that we selected as a team. Okay. Uh, this one is by Dennis Cow. Uh, okay. he, he was inspired. He was inspired by two things. So he was inspired by the Du Bois uh, visualizations, but he was also inspired by. Uh, one of the other visualizations that we're going to be sharing, um, but someone, his name is Chimdi Nuoso. So he was inspired by his work as well, his tableau work. And then, of course, he was inspired by the Du Bois visualizations at the same time. So what he did is that he looked at the Black population in Canada. So again, we had, you know, like heroes looking at Brazil. And then we have Dennis looking at Canada. And what I like here is how he starts off with the different provinces showing the populations across each and showing that the highest um one is in ontario 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 yeah. and then going down he uses again another inspired graph to show this one is showing the immigration so where people are coming from okay. and, and they've been into canada so a lot of um the black population is from both you know, Africa being the top, and then you have the Caribbean and Bermuda being second. Mm. Uh, then the following, you know, it's interesting, North America, not too many people immigrating to Canada. Um, we're right, you know, we're almost, we're right there, we're neighbors, right? So but both the bulk of it has come from people of African descent or from the Caribbean. <clears throat> Very nice. And then in terms of diversity, he's using another Du Bois. He's actually showing you down here the visualizations mm. that inspire yeah, his, mm. his realization. So here he's looking at the admission category um, as well as immigrant generation. So you have a lot of first generation uh, mm -hmm. versus second and third and in the period um, that they immigrated. Is there any reason what that one, go, go back, go back down. That, that, uh, that one is turned like this, right? Um, Which one? The one that, one, that one. That one's the one yeah. that I think it was interesting. Something different. I've never seen that before. Yeah. So, so let me let me talk about that one. Yes, um, so this one, the original was was crime statistics on the one that's that's tilted, right? Oh, okay. Um, 
so this one is uh, it's showing some some different data, I believe. So the thing that you'll see in that what what Dennis did is he didn't quite duplicate it, right? So instead of taking sort of a a, a rectangle and just rotating mm -hmm. it forty five degrees, mm -hmm. he also shifted the so it's like a a, a parallelogram, if you will. Mm -hmm. so, um, so it's not quite the same. Okay. Um, but the other thing that I want to say here is I want to give kudos to to using the color scheme. So if you scroll yes. up, if you scroll up, so he's used all of the colors in the color palette. So I think uh, he showed um, originally I, I identified what's in the color palette. Mm -hmm. good, good, good use of the color palette here. Uh, and also good use of small multiples, right? Mm -hmm. yes. You've got... Um, different types here with the annotation of the um of the the bar graphs right the only nitpick i would say and this is not a criticism but it's just something that i would do so he tended to use the red for just the bare bar charts i would use, i would use the red <laughs> mm. um but again that's not a that's just a a, a pure observation um and also, obviously, you know, shout out to the to the famous Du Bois spirals here. Um, they're there as well. So I like the fact that we've got multiple things going on. They're not really clashing, but you can sort of take them in yeah. um, as you need to. Very nice. I like yeah. I like that you can change. You see, you you click on that and you change the visualization. Correct. Somebody prefer the other one or wants to see the difference yeah graph versus a map mm -hmm, the graph versus the map yeah that's really cool um when you hover on any of those go back to the, the previous one to 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 not that one to the other one yeah to, does it give you anything on the hover no it's just no. Um, okay. yeah, you can see everything all the information here so he's just showing how ontario you know it's the spiral you know, has the highest viral, yeah. Yeah, so the other thing is, again, um, shout out to teaching me um, something I didn't know, which was wow. what's the density of the black population in Canada. That's not something oh. I, I didn't know really, that really yeah. considered, um, but now I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean... Do you have anything uh, secure to say or anything that uh, you wanted to share? Yeah, I mean, just like Anthony's point, highlighting the actually tie to Canada. Uh, again, when we when we created this uh, challenge, you know, just seeing who all is touched and where it's gone, like it's just it's kind of mind blowing to me. Uh, so seeing the different metrics, seeing actual Canada data, people bringing in different insights there. Um, is mind blowing. And then just from the flow of the actual biz itself, you know, combining multiple things into one viz and telling one particular story um it's really cool to me uh small super small nitpicky thing but if you go down to the bottom um just the the order of the two pictures on the bottom right you know you have the horizontal one that's right to the left and then you have the vertical one to the right it's small <laughs> super small nitpicky but you know just switching those around because so, we read left to right and all the stuff that comes with that but otherwise I see. it's really good yeah. yeah. So I'm just wondering. So if you go back to the to the bottom again, um, it's just mm -hmm. people keep asking questions, and we have another one that maybe Anthony you wanted to talk about. I have an idea. So they just say, is there any purpose of angling the hundred percent bar chart towards the bottom rather than straight horizontal? I was just thinking of this. If we, if I have a, I don't have one here, but a glass of water, and I want to emphasize, you know, if they have three different colors, I want to emphasize. The amount going and I, and I tilt a little bit, it will look, you know, more. I don't know if that's what they were trying to. I was just thinking, it's it's interesting. It's just interesting to see that, right? You know, I don't know why they did that because, as you can see, the one next to it is just the sort of vertical one, right. and they, they have different versions of that throughout the collection. Mm -hmm. I the only thing that I can think of is just for some some visual panache, right? Mm -hmm. um, just to, to, to mm -hmm. switch things up a little bit. 
you definitely look at it and say, wait a second, it's tilted, right? Um, so you may may want to zoom into it just because of that. I have no idea why, but I can tell you sort of my uh, reaction to it. Well, could it be, Anthony? Because, you know, these were poster size, right? And really, That's correct. So, they really so maybe the tilt was done because, you know, depending where this was hanging in his exhibition, mm. the poster size, instead of someone having to look up and down to see it, maybe if they angled it. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, for view of it. Yeah, there, there is a picture, Anthony, that you have where it shows where they were hanging that right, that white and black uh, picture that Correct. shows uh, the thing in the in France. Yep. In the and then I was looking at that and I was just thinking, the light that day or whenever they were there, maybe the sunlight or whatever could affect how people were looking at that. Correct. Yeah. So the, the venue is important when you when you look at the original venue for these, right? So it was actually a small space, but so I like to think that you know the bold colors and things like that would attract people to seeing them. Yeah. There you go. Um, and, and also, if you look at that carefully, you can see you could grab the posters and sort of flip through them, right? Mm -hmm. um, sort of like if you've ever been to the poster store, right, where you sort of flip through the posters in the bin, you can see that as well. Yeah, this is some of the some of the originals, original ones. But uh, I think it was really cool to see where they uh, actually. Yeah, so you're talking about this. Yeah, they flip the posters here. You, you can flip this and see all of them. That's correct. Yeah, Let's look at that. So I think to the point earlier, right, this is a conference which has, you know, I don't know the number of people that actually in attendance, but he's not the only booth there. So you have to do something to draw in people and call in people. So I think there is a bit of craftsman slash sales uh, slash mm -hmm. I only have three seconds to get your attention. Like, what can I do to draw That's you true. in um, to, to mm -hmm. look at this thing? So subtle, like just subtleties, it just makes this guy brilliant. Um, it's just that it's just amazing to me. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, uh, Seku, do you have any that you wanted to show us today? Yeah, and I yeah. got one. let me let me let me take my screen and and you can show us. Sure. Let me because that thing on the in, in France, it probably was like a booth, like when you go to a conference and there's yeah. like this booth, and then you're looking at at something, you know, over there in the booth. I mean, mm -hmm. that's incredible. Oh, nice. Got it. All right. So this is by far one of my favorite ones. Uh, mm -hmm. This is Chimdi. If you have not following Chimdi on anything on Tableau Public or on Please. Twitter, follow him literally right now. Uh, Chimdi's amazing. He does great stuff. So as we talked about earlier with the challenge, we've been rolling stuff out week by week. And typically people do stuff at a week by week cadence. Uh, Chimdi took it upon himself to do everything at once and then combine it into one workbook. So yeah. uh, you see that W.E.B. Du Bois portrait gallery is here and the cool thing this is the really interactive it's not really just a static image it's really really um mm -hmm. really interactive within tableau so a couple things that he did that i really like here you have the information icon and so oh. within here it just gives you more context and gives you more links and uh gives you stuff about you know mr boy and then the challenge itself so you can actually go and get the data and then some of the inspiration so just off the start of it you know he talks about the uh the gallery and just everything that's going on and then from here because this is tableau um he does a great job of making it interactive so mm -hmm. these are navigation buttons so you can either click on it and navigate to the actual image that you want to see or you can click next page uh, so for this example i'll just go to this one mm -hmm. Oh, and right. click on it we see it takes you directly there so everything is just in one workbook um already built out um yeah. you click on the hamburger button um, he just shows you, you know, just additional information, a lot of context, uh, talks about the design and then just a lot of additional information. So I th really think combining all this information into one, like I talked about, you have the navigation button, so you can just see it in order, um, compiled in and there's a home button and you just like did a really good job of bringing this all together. And then it's publicly accessible as well. So you can mm -hmm. actually come in here and see the calcs that he did to build out and you know recreate this stuff so someone who's trying to learn tableau and look at the calcs that have been built out is just really good resource 
Yeah, and it's no easy feat, some of the ones he did. Like, it's a lot of work that goes in, at least with, you know, especially with this one, the spiral. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, button in Tableau that says create spiral. You know, you have to do a lot of exactly. things. That's right. Yeah, a, a lot of people are challenged by this one. Um, and I think that's part of the fun of it. Um, where, where the folks in 1900 took, you know, a pen and went like this, right? Mm -hmm. we, we've got to figure out math to be able to do that. And this is not, this is not a, a, a thing you click the button and says, give me the spiral, right? Nobody's built that in Excel or Power BI or Tableau yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so if anybody is working on those tools, get on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, impressive because it looks so close, right? So similar to the original. I mean, it just looks really good. It looks like a book, right? The, the, the yeah. background too. Um, I like like you're flipping pages. You were just flipping a page. You were pretty much uh, doing mm -hmm. that, right? And yeah. on the bottom, he has to view the original, so he does. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. Okay, I forgot about that. Yes, that's the image of the original. That's incredible. That's mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. The, it's in the chat if anyone wants to look at it that is watching. If anyone wants to look at it, yeah. Yeah, this this idea of taking you know extraneous data and either wrapping it or doing like this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, they used in in several instances. Right on. Fascinating, fascinating. Be really cool. Then we yeah, see it's really, yeah. really, really a favorite of mine, just because it, it just consolidates a lot of information okay. into one place mm -hmm. um, for your user and and for people that are looking at this. So this one is really much wow. my favorite. Yeah, it's like nineteen of the visualizations are in here. Wow. And the cool thing that you can go back, that you can actually, I mean, I think the thing about being able to check and, and look at the original, wow, it's impressive that you had all this information. Yeah. Like this one, yeah. Incredible. Incredible. Wow. So you can see the, yes, this one, wow. It looks so much like the original. And I mean, one of the things that you could do in the future could be if, if, if Lynn, let's say that you create this as a template and then you can inject your new data. So for example, uh, somebody have new data for, I don't know, you're, you're in another country, Australia, and then you wanted to inject almost the same data from the population of Australia, then boom, and then you do it here. And it would just, how the, that will look. So, 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 so one detail I want to point out, if you can zoom that just a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Notice, notice the annotations mm -hmm. have the, as if they, they, they break up the grid, if you will. Mm -hmm. So it's as if someone wrote them on a card and pasted them on, mm -hmm. right? So that's how the original was. Um, so that's just a detail. You could have just sort of slapped some text up there. Um, but if you want to be really faithful to it, again, he's done that in that he has the, the outline around the annotations. Wow. I didn't know what that means with this now. I didn't even, I don't even know how he did that. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. Well, we have to, we have to call him up and ask how he did that. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a little bit transparent and wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Very cool. Very interesting. Do you have any other that you wanted to show us? Yeah, I have Very one good. more I can show. Yeah, show um, us another one. This is great. I mean, it is in the chat. Whoever wants to look at it, please yes. check it out on the chat. Any questions? So this one, um, so one of the things we did with the Dubois Challenge was scrape the information, look at the challenges stats, and look at who's doing what. And what we noticed is that even outside of Tableau, Power BI, you know, different data visualization mm -hmm. communities, mm -hmm. we actually have had people um, with a challenge within the R stats community. So looking at some of the R visuals that have been created has been really cool to look at. So this has been one that I've seen that that I saw that was pretty cool, um, built in R stats and just, again, the circle chart and how to do the legends and kind of their take on it um, was a really cool one that stood out to me. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of love from the uh, Tidy Tuesday community. Yeah, 
again, this is not a chart you're going to, you know, click on from your gallery. you got to build this. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Yeah, this one's not simple. Uh, so, okay, so let's look at value of taxable property on environment. All right, okay, taxable property. Because I'm trying to, I wanted to see, okay, so the red means... So those are the year, right? Value. Yeah, so people have a hard time interpreting this one. <laughs> so how do you interpret it? Uh, just wanted to, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, like. So it's it's talking about, you know, how much how much money, <clears throat> how much property mm -hmm. uh, people have. And if you sort of look, <clears throat> the rings are actually the amounts. So if okay. you go in, in 1899, it's the largest amount. Okay. Right? And then it's sort of everybody just sort of pushes in. That's what the little arrows are, are for. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what the, the 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 they they actually put a a, a key there, which is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can see how people how, how how things increased from eighteen seventy five mm -hmm. all the way to eighteen ninety nine. Ninety nine. Right? Yes. And if you see the circles, you see here the circle is gradually increasing in size. Increasing. That's correct. That's correct. The circle is rather increasing, yes. Hmm. Yeah. Because the red could be like a bull's eye or something, like a, you know, like a, just to look at it because you see how that uh, thing. Um, That's right. So, so yeah, so the, each arrow, each color, sort of again, it's pointing into um, the and, and showing their values, which is, again, not something you see yes. every day. Today, yeah. I mean, I think the creativity here—it's incredible, right? Because and, and also, what's interesting is they took the time to replicate kind of the hand-drawn mm -hmm. thing, so you can see if you if you if you zoom it in a little, if if that's possible. Yeah, yeah. So you can see how um, the the circles are kind of—you can kind of see the brush strokes. But you can really see them around the the areas, right? Mm -hmm. So they so they took the time to kind of replicate the the sort of hand drawn nature of it. Okay, yeah, that's impressive, impressive. But this is one you definitely have to you know spend some time on to understand the story and what it's trying to do. Um, I think the first time I looked at it, I was confused because I thought the five point three million yeah. was the key insight but in reality it was the the amount of values and it's just the red is the bigger piece of the pie it's just you know yes. everything is overlapping it so it took me some time to understand that yeah oh okay yeah yeah very interesting i'm, I'm wondering if uh this was the inspiration for some since this was in 1900 and it was the inspiration for other things because i don't know what i feel like i've seen that something similar before Maybe from Marvel Comics? It looks like a Captain America um, shield, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe they, they copy these ideas. I mean, that they do that. I mean, they, they look at everything, right? So they could be looking at books or something, and they, they copy some ideas. Um, well, this is the original. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, but I, I still think, like, even this visual, right, here's that wow factor to just get you to look at it in, in the expose and just be like, all right, you know, what's the story telling me? Like, this is really creative. It caught my attention in two seconds. I want to know what it's saying immediately, but it caught my attention. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Especially that going in, and definitely the red one, you know, you see is the, the larger one going in, in with more. Yeah. Very nice. So, Anthony, I think that you you wanted to share something. I did. Uh, I did. There. A lot more. So, thank if you, you can click to me. Thank you. Thank you for that one. They're amazing, both of them. So this one is interesting, and in uh, mm -hmm. guess what? Drawn by hand. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so this is from um, you know the the uh, Baltimore OPI. Um, where they took again, they took the tradition of taking, you know, contemporary data and showing it, right? So here's again my favorite, the the fan chart, right? So if you're not familiar with the fan chart, the fan chart is useful for taking two populations and comparing them, right? Okay. So you have a population on the top 
and you have a population on the bottom, mm. right? And then you see, you know, the, the wedges are like sort of pie chart wedges, but they don't go all the way around, right? Um, and then you've got room in the negative space on the left and the right to put your um, um, to put your legends, and you and you can compare very quickly two populations. So, for example, um, the black and African American. So, in this case, the two populations are um, whites and African Americans in Baltimore mm -hmm. City and yeah. the occupations. Well, the original was also comparing occupations. So, let's say if you wanted to see um, what population um, are in education and healthcare, just look at the red wedges and you can compare them um, across from the top and the bottom. Yes. Right? So okay. you can see, okay, red, red, 30%, 18%. Um, let's keep going down. Professions, 28%, 33%. And you can see very quickly, if you will, if there's any discrepancies between the two populations. You can do it by color and obviously by by the wet size. But what's interesting to me, obviously, is this one was hand drawn in the tradition of 1900. So it looks like they just use crayons, uh -huh. <laughs> which is cool, right? Um, but it's just as effective as as the as the digital versions to me. Yeah, maybe we gotta do a coloring book next. That should be our own. Yeah. Um, right. <clears throat> you heard it here live. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So so we can do the Du Bois coloring book. Yeah. Um, I, so, I, I like that the 18 and the 30. I can see it real quick. 28, 33, 22, 22. So the same. Correct. And then 10, same, 6, 14. And I think it's not a four. Four percent and three percent. Yeah. Four percent. Right? Okay. It works. It works. So I recreated this one mm -hmm. um, and posted it um, just taking their data because I have a program that will make these fan charts. So you just put the data in and hit the button and boof, you got a fan chart. Mm -hmm. um, so so that was that was fun being able to to do that one as well. Yeah. I thought it was cool that the um, this is from the mayor's office of Baltimore City. So, mm -hmm. again, you know, we have yet another area, you know, we have Baltimore and I think their data was from 2016. But, yeah, I just thought it was really cool that the oh, we had a whole age, agency like do our project. Our they channel. did. Right. <clears throat> Very good. It's probably faster to hand draw it than the time it took for me to recreate this. <laughs> oh my god, this gave me a nightmare when I was trying to create this. Oh my god! But this, I, had I known, I probably would have hand drawn it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it will be really nice, honestly, to recreate this. It will be really nice because I think it could be useful with other data. Um, exactly. Yep. Yeah, so, really so nice. use use my fan chart program, and you can make them. <laughs> um, uh, do you have the digital version to see? I do. I do. Um, hang on. Give me a second. I will yeah. show it to you. Just to look at it. Yeah, it would be nice to look at it. This is really good. Uh, let's see. So you can see the older. Okay. Well, the other thing that I did was um, I have another uh, repo where I have all of the modern recreations. Hang on one second. Put a link, uh, I'll put the link to the to the modern things in a second. Hang on one second. Don't worry. Yeah, okay. So, um, okay. What was, okay, go ahead. Yeah. I'm gonna. Uh, can you see that or not? Do I have to share separately? Um, you probably can't see that. Let me. Um, I'm gonna stop the screen and and share. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. One second. Okay.
Yeah, that works. Okay. That works. Okay, hang on. Let me get you guys out of the way. <laughs> okay, now can you see it now? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, yes. we can see both of them. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Oh, nice. Okay. So there's the the hand drawn, and there's the the digital version. Again, this was uh, uh, done with the the fan chart program. How do we get to your fan works. chart program, Anthony? Say again? How do we get to your fan chart program? Um, let me put a link to that in the chat. One second. Yeah, put it in the chat. We put it there in the for anyone to to use it. Um, have anybody have tried to create create this in Tableau or Power BI? Yeah, I tried in Tableau. I um it's difficult, right? Yeah, it was a journey. It was a journey. I got <laughs> it. I don't know if I was to update the data. Would it uh, still work? Because uh, I had to do some calculations. I don't think I understood some of it. Uh, <laughs> but wow. I was able to get something on here. And well, the like, other thing that I did last year is I posted to Twitter the 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 algorithm that I use to 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 make this. Um, so it's it's actually once you do it, it's you go, oh yeah. But but in order to get there, it's it's not always easy. Yeah. All right, so hang on, let me let me point to um, yeah. the repository that has all of these modern um, recreations. Okay. Okay. Let's get to that. Okay. Um, what we do? Do you guys have any other charts you guys want to show, uh, Ellen or uh, anyone? Um, Say, could you have our dashboard? Uh, I can pull it up. Yeah. Give me a second. Did you guys get the, the link? Let me make sure I got it. Yeah, I see Anthony. Oh, you got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then uh, Aaron, I think, put it there already. If it's, oh, I can actually share yes, something. Yes, you did. So you there. So the last link, please. It's the chart okay. program from Anthony. Yep. Hang on. Me, I, I'm getting that while Alan is getting his up. Oh no! I'm gonna let Seku share the dashboard. I have. Oh, right. We can just look at our oh. challenge dashboard. Cool. Oh, let me do that again. Okay, here it is. Okay, so uh, is. this is our actual challenge metric dashboard. So okay. uh, one of the things we wanted to do is actually measure uh, the participation. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, built out a Python script, pull in Du Bois Challenge and Du Bois Challenge 2022 hashtag information, wow. and uh, from there, you know, just natural exploratory analysis. You know, we look at the total tweets, the total unique users, uh, date with the most activity, and then we have a map. So the map is based on the location. So if you do not have any type of location in your Twitter handle, you're not going to display on this map. And then just trying to highlight some additional information. So uh, mm -hmm. looking at the engagement of the users who have actually interacted and used the hashtag. Um, and then we also have just some trending over time information. So if you want to look mm -hmm. year over year, you can look, back, look at that comparison. If you want to look at the quarter, you can do that as well. If you want to look at a month, you break it down that way. And then day. So it mm -hmm. uh, just depends on, you know, what exactly it is that you want to look at. You see the highest number of tweets was February 16th. And then this is actually an interactive table because people love tables. So, you know, just see some high level information of the date, the Twitter handle. Um, the actual hyperlink, the count, retweet, all that. And if you click on it, it will then take you to oh, the actual yeah, tweet yeah. itself. So, yeah. Um, and cool. I think you have some additional filters in here. So, yeah, you have some additional filters to the actual date. And then you can differentiate by the challenge. So, our original challenge was just Dubois uh, challenge, mm -hmm. but then we added 2022 this year. And then if you want to look at just verified users, you can do that. And then if there's a particular handle that you want to filter on, you can mm -hmm. do that as well. Someone in particular, yeah. I mean, in the map, you can see it's all over the place. I mean, it's everywhere, right? It's um, and the map shows a worldwide, uh, yeah. almost worldwide participation. Yeah, yeah, it's everywhere. Wow, well, Australia, um, the island off of Africa. I forget the name. Oh, Madagascar. Yes. Yes, uh, you can see. Look at this! Incredible. Yeah, everywhere. And I think you just have the username on here as well. Mm -hmm. So. 
Um, again, just high level metrics, because again, the biggest thing we see is, you know, there's the challenges out here and uh, you do want these challenges. You have to go to a Google sheet and put the information, a link, all that stuff. It makes it a little bit harder for your user to kind of capture that information. So we tried to take that out and just look at truly Twitter metrics and um, compile something that way. Yeah, and this is a very good way to for anybody that is looking at the challenge to find some inspiration right from the top uh, Twitter uh, handles or like unique users or the activity. And you can go there and, and find them. Yeah. Yep. And then this is the quarter of the year. OK. Yeah, very nice. Most activity since uh, February 16. So was February 16 when you started, right? No, no. February seventh was when we started this year. Okay, for seven. Okay. Yeah, I think we started around the seventh last year. Too. Yeah, we did. Yeah, the seventh last year. That was our first time last year. Okay. Yeah, I think the sixteenth. I well, besides it being my birthday, I think it was. Um, <laughs> I think uh, we announced the first submission or something like that, or something happened. Very yeah, cool. Then. No, this is awesome. This is awesome. Um, no, this is great. This is great to, to change to find it. Um, it's in the chat too. So if anybody wants to look at that, please do so. Um, I wanted to ask you if there are any other visualizations you wanted to show us. Uh, the, I know that you have many. All of you, you you're more than welcome. Show you anything else. Uh, we we have time. We're good. I don't mind going over and going and, and look at this amazing data. So just let us let me know. Let me just have any other that would like to to share. I don't have any things. I can stop sharing. All right. I can share one more. I can okay, cool. So one more, yeah. Why not? Um, and please, uh, anybody that you know, that's the uh uh Du Bois Challenge 2022. Uh so if you guys want to use that hashtag and LinkedIn and Twitter too, right? I imagine. Yep. Uh just please do so um, and follow and and also uh, please, uh, you know, LinkedIn, follow all of them, everybody here, Alan, Anthony, so do, uh, so good, uh, follow them, please, uh, go to LinkedIn, uh, and send them a link and invite and follow all of them, please. Yeah. So again, this one's a crossover. It's the, uh, Tuskegee Airmen Challenge. Mm. Yeah. What I liked about yeah, this one this. is that it's like, it has that whole newspaper format. So okay. just, oh, the, wow. Yes. It goes mm -hmm. through the it goes through the you know I like the photo of showing them, and then it has a timeline. Oh. And, and so you and can it's interactive. Wow, interactive, and then how many came from the home state? Um, mm. so there's that. It's incredible. It's and incredible then, how is it still it looks like a newspaper. It's so good. Yeah. This is oh this was done by Timothy Blaz Blazer. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Um, he's over at the Veterans Veterans Talk. That Veterans Talk. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he was looking at the fight, uh, you know, the different aerial victories that we had. Um, and again, this data came, we worked with the CAF Red Tails organization. They're an organization that um, promotes the education of the airmen um, in schools. And they have actual an actual plane or two mm -hmm. that they use, um, you know, not well, not to fly, but you know, they use an exhibit. So, um, <laughs> so one, and then it also does the sacrifice. So I really like this one because of the newspaper format, it catches my eye. And this is one of the few ones, if not the only one, that shares the photo of the um, pilots. So it kind of personalizes the story a little bit more. Very nice. I mean, I think it's impressive. It just, it looks it looks so good because it looks like a, a real newspaper. I mean, it just looks incredible. Yeah. It's perfectly really positioned, everything. Mm. Yeah, and I was just going to add one thing I learned from this. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of the Tuskegee Airmen, there were actually some who were from outside of the U.S. So there was some right. from, the, yep. from, the ha from Haiti and Dominican Republic in Trinidad. Oh, wow. so, um, so that was something new that I learned at this exploration this year. I really think it's amazing. So what, what does the – so if you go over to some of the airplanes underneath uh, – so it tells you anything? Yeah. Oh. yeah. So that the, the those are telling you the kind of um, planes that they used. So okay. from the P forty to the P uh, thirty nine, P forty seven Thunderbolt, and P fifty one Mustang, the most known 
for for flying the the Mustang. Um, yeah. Then so so yeah. So those are just the silhouettes of the planes that they used. Um, and these are okay. aerial victories. Okay. Um, they are known as having the the highest. It's hard to always articulate the highest. Um, I think save rate. Like they don't. They don't. They were accompanying different fighter planes, and they have the highest rate of the least casualties. Yeah. So 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 what they what they were known for, and there was a myth actually that mm -hmm. that they lost no. Um, so part of part of what you know a fighter pilot does is. He, you know, dog fights with other uh, planes, but they also do escort missions. That's what that 179 there, bomber escort missions, shows. Um, and they were known, there was a myth that was promulgated that they lost no planes um, during the escort. That's not true, but they had a very, very, very good record mm -hmm. of, of, of escorts. So... Mm -hmm. So, and they also, you know, had a, a reasonably good record for, for aerial victories as well. So, and, and there's another visualization, which I, um, let me put in the chat as well. One second. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yes, please put it in the chat. Um, okay. That also shows uh, the the decorations that that they achieved. Okay. Um, well, let me put that there. So this is the the one. The last one that you you shared was from the victories, right? I think. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah, there's two. One one is the victories, and also also shows the the other things as well. So. Okay. Well, this is great. And. This is a, is this a different challenge, right? Um, uh, it's a challenge. Yeah, it's separate from the boy. It's if they're, if they're running the board, in right? parallel. Um, Anthony has a visualization that he did that kind of br bridges the two together. Where okay. he used the uh, he used the boy style visualization to show um, a little bit of history of the Tuskegee Airmen. But yeah, yeah. So if you click if you click on that one and, and put it up, you can you can see the last one that I linked to. Okay, the, the, I, the I, I, I can share or no, this, the second one. Okay. Do you want me to share or? You, you can share. You can share. Okay, let me do that one second. You can share. That would be awesome. Okay. Ah, too many things going on here. <laughs> that works. Share. Okay. All right. You guys see that? Yes. Okay. So, so this one is showing. Um, if you look, the, the one of the plates on the Du Bois shows um, the slave trade going from Africa to um to america to north and south america um okay. so i took the day that alan showed and it shows mm -hmm. these two hemispheres right mm -hmm. um this one reverses that in that it takes the birthplace of each of the airmen plotted on the left and shows them going over to europe to defend freedom right and that's that star there is the their um their base in Remitelli, um, Italy. Um, and you see, you know, below that is the, and you can see, as Alan pointed out, uh, we got some folks from, from the Caribbean, from South America also um, coming from to, to there. And what you also see there is, is the, the citations that they also um, uh, gained, you know, eight Purple Hearts, uh, 14 bronze stars, 96 distinguished flying crosses, 140, 744 air medals. And then there's the, the Brahmer escort mission. They had a 3.9 mission loss rate, which is, which is really good. It's excellent. Yeah. And, and then on in, next to it is 
sort of my version showing the aircraft. Um, in, in many cases, these are the actual air, these are models of the actual aircraft mm -hmm. um, that they used. And the so, next page mm -hmm. just um, puts you know put some faces with the names, right? So mm -hmm. you've got people from like Lee Archer from New York, Lowell Stewart from California, um, Edward Glee from Kansas. Benjamin L. Davis is probably the most famous Tuskegee Airman. And then you've got pictures of them um, sort of in action at uh, Remitelli. Super interesting. I like how you use the uh, the bar charts, uh, you know, like the it with the plane. I mean, you can tell, you know, which one's higher and just really cool. It looks like, you know, came coming out from the back. Like exactly. That. That's sort of showing sort of, so if you notice the red tails, they were known by right. As the red tail, so that was that sort of streak showing that. Hmm. That and also in the title. On the title, yes. That makes sense. Very nice. Oh, this is great. It's awesome work. Thank you so much. Oh, You're welcome. Pretty much at the end of the show today, we went over a little bit, but we wanted to show the best of the best. I mean, we know everybody have, uh, you know, have to go back to work, unfortunately, but because <laughs> we wanted to keep talking about this and, uh, but you guys are all welcome anytime. Uh, please share this with, your you. with anybody. Uh, I really congratulate all of you because this is incredible work. And I think I hope that, you know, we can teach others about with this history, data visualization. I mean, there's so many things that you can put together here for educational purposes. I mean, I wanna, I'm going to show all of this to my son later today. I mean, and I think that, you know, super important, super important, the, the, the work that you guys are all doing. And uh, like I said, uh, we can even do part two of this anytime because there's so many good visualizations that are out there and a great a way to teach people about history, about, you know, everybody's using these tools, but then nobody knows where they're coming from or what inspired maybe those programmers or those individuals who created Tableau, you know, 12, 10, 20 years ago or Altrix or, or, or like, Power BI when they created it, how, how they started with this. I mean, that's that's the thing that is super important. Yeah. Anybody else want to say anything? Thanks, or, thanks for having us. I, I really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having yeah. us. Thanks for letting us talk about it and um, share yeah. our experience with it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for everyone who participated too. Yes. Anytime, like I said, anything, that's what we're here for. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And like I said, uh, have have a wonderful week. Uh, thank you for everything. I'm going to, you know, hopefully put it out there. Uh, it's going to be available. I think after the show is going to be already available. So anybody can want to see, watch the replay. Uh, more than welcome. And thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you soon.